from around the globe in sold out arenas and humble churches from out on the streets to your screen and now the time and what must be done part 11 on this edition of Farrakhan Speaks Greetings to you. I am Minister Louis Farrakhan, National Representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the eternal leader of the Nation of Islam, and that great preacher of freedom, justice, and equality to the Aboriginal people of the earth, and particularly the black man and woman of America and the Western Hemisphere, and a warner to the United States of America, its people, its government, and the nations of the earth. Once again, I am so pleased to be able to come again to you and speak to you via television, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and talk to you about this most interesting and valuable subject matter given to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The title of the subject is The Time and What Must Be Done. I wanted to refer back to last week's lecture where the prodigal son was given as a, a parable by Jesus, and we attempted to prove to you that the prodigal son that Jesus was talking about, he was giving a picture of the black man and woman of America, the transatlantic slave trade, and are trying to join ourselves on to be a citizen in a strange country, squandering everything that we once had in our father's house. And then a famine arose and the prodigal son began to think, as many of you, my dear beloved black brothers and sisters, are thinking today. And he spoke these words, I think I shall arise and go to my father. Then another parable that he gave was the parable of the wicked husbandman. And it was there that we spent a little time on this wicked husbandman given power to rule over the earth, its people, its societies until the coming of God. And because their rule would be a contrary rule, they would never bring in the fruits of righteousness that the owner of the vineyard or the real sovereign of the universe desired. So in this 6,000 year period, of the rule of the Caucasian people. Prophets were sent, prophets were killed, prophets were beaten, prophets were arrested and imprisoned. And even though the prophets may have brought up a righteous community, when that prophet was gone, Satan overpowered the righteous and corrupted their teachings. And so today, even though we honor Jesus and Moses and Muhammad and Abraham and the prophets with our lips, the scriptures of the Bible and Quran say our hearts have been far removed from the righteousness of the teachings of the prophets. 
So in uh, that scripture, that parable, the exegesis of which points to the Caucasian people and their rule of the entire earth. Now we're talking about the Western world, America being the chief leader of the Western world. Then there's England, France, Italy, Germany, Spain, Portugal. All of these were involved in the enslavement, the colonization, and the persecution and destruction of the darker people of the earth. And yet, Jesus prophesied of many signs that would point to the end of their time of rule. I shall repeat those signs because it is necessary for you that are listening to come up out of the parties, come up out of sport and play, come up and look at what is going on in the world around you that you may come into congruence in harmony with the time. Then you will know what must be done so that you will not continue to suffer loss and distress and affliction that might lead to our deaths. So in the scripture, God says, I will take the kingdom from you and I will give it to another nation that will bring in the fruits thereof. What is that nation that God will give the kingdom to? Where is it? Who is it that we may know and understand the meaning of these parables given by Jesus the prophet 2,000 years ago? The kingdom will be taken from you. Jesus was talking to the Jewish people of that day. Here we are 2,000 years from Jesus. And now America is at the forefront of the fulfillment of these prophecies which we will get into by the grace of God in this broadcast. So here we are, the signs that Jesus spoke of, wars, rumors of wars, nation rising against nation, kingdom against kingdom, pestilence, famine, and earthquakes in diverse places. But Jesus said, this is only the beginning of sorrows. Well, then it talks about how the families will be broken apart. And if you remember what I said in a previous broadcast that the Jesus that you are looking for in this time, the Messiah, is not going to unite all the people. He is here to divide the house, separate the wheat from the tare, the sheep from the goat, the righteous from the wicked, and this will be done by the presence of a powerful truth that judges the world and the behavior of the people that the wicked have deceived. And the scripture says that serpent has gone throughout the earth and deceived the whole world. Well, if the whole world is deceived, in what way are we deceived? We're deceived about that man that would come at the end of the world to end Satan's power, to end his dominance over the people of the earth, to begin the destruction of Satan's rule, and to free the masses of the people from the deception of Satan's rule by telling them that particular truth that Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Well, all of these signs are now being fulfilled. 
Look at the division in the households. Look at children killing their parents and parents killing their children. Look at the unseemly behavior of people in love with themselves in an inordinate way in contravention of the divine laws and will of God. Look at the way Hollywood, and this is really satanic, is enjoying making the people to deviate from the will and the law of God. Satan delights in turning the people of God into rebellion against God because Satan's desire is to take the people of God down to hell with him when he goes. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said his desire is to make the truth so plain in these last days of this wicked nation and world that the fool would find it hard to make a mistake. Now let's go to the scriptures. It says, quote, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things are fulfilled. As we said last week, it could not have been talking about the generation of Jesus the prophet, but it was talking about a time when the Messiah and the Mahdi is in the world that that generation would not pass before all of the things that the Jesus of 2000 years prophesied would come to pass. A generation, remember, we said is 30 years. And we are 2,000 years from Jesus, the prophet. And if you divide 30 into 2,000, you get the number 66.666. Well, this is the number of the beast. And in the book of Revelations, again, I repeat, the number of the beast is the number of a man, 600, three score, and six. So when you see these numbers coming up again, 66.666, then this is that generation that by the grace of God will live to see all of the things that Jesus the prophet prophesied come to pass. In the Holy Quran, it is written, every nation has its term. And when its term comes, it cannot delay the term or time, nor can it go ahead of that time. America, America, this nation's term has come. What is a term? A term, according to Webster's Dictionary, is a fixed or limited period for which something lasts or is intended to last. Well, what nation is it whose term has come? If we go to the book of Genesis again, the 15th chapter, the 13th, 14th, and 15th verses, God is telling Abraham that his seed will in the future be in a strange land among a strange people and they will be oppressed and afflicted in that land for 400 years. But listen to the words that are spoken to Abraham. After that time of 400 years, God speaking, I will come and I will judge that nation which they shall serve. 
The children of Israel in Egypt were a prophetic, symbolic picture of that people that would fulfill the scriptures uh, that uh, Jesus was prophesying and giving parables about. And here we are, having been brought through the transatlantic slave trade and the first slaves coming to this shore, these shores, in the year 1555. So in 1955, we had come to 400 years of the fulfillment of our servitude, slavery to America and its people. So from that that time on, the presence of God would begin to interfere with America's rule over the black man and the black man and woman of America styled in the scriptures as dead would begin the process of resurrection. It's not talking about some dead people in the cemetery. It's talking about a people who have eyes but can't see, ears that can't hear, tongues that can't speak, blind, deaf, and dumb, spiritually dead, morally turned out by Satan, politically dead, economically dead, intellectually dead. That is the condition of the black man and woman of America. The wickedness of our slave masters and their children has been such on us that they have made us into themselves. So that our wickedness is equal to theirs. So when we say that they have been devils, you say, well, what about us? Because the killing of us that's going on in the neighborhoods today, it's by us against us. It's black on black crime, black on black violence, black on black death. And so we have become as evil to ourselves as our former slave masters and their children have been and still are to us. And that is why the scripture says God's coming is after the workings of Satan. And we are the product of his work. He has turned the black man out. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, and the Quran bears him witness that the Caucasian world would rule in a vacuum in our history. 6,000 years is a short time from the infinity of time before Yaqub's made man and an infinity of time after their power is broken, their world is destroyed and a new world of righteousness will come in called the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of Allah or the kingdom of Islam. We are at that time. And so, my beloved brothers and sisters, we need not to be talked to in simple terms. We need a re-education that we may be brought back to our real selves. Well, what is our real self? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad asks, our real self is a self of righteousness because we are born in the nature of God, which is to submit our will to do the will of God. But he has made us into himself, so all types of unrighteousness is practiced by him, and he has allowed us into his social equality, which he kept us out of for years because he was afraid that when we learned the filth of their doings in their private parties and dwellings, 
that we would run them from among us. But we are not going to run them from among us because we have become the same as they. So they have invited us into their social equality. They have integrated us into their bedrooms and not necessarily into their boardrooms. Although some of us are on their boards, we are just spooks that sit by the door. We are not the ones that create the policies, but we say yay when they say yay. And we are afraid in those boards to speak up and say nay, because we have to go along to get along in order to stay on the board. But to stay in the bed, oh no, they have fixed that. In the book of Revelations, you have a dragon that is sitting astride the beast and the dragon is dressed in scarlet and the dragon gives guidance to the beast. Well, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad quoting from Martin Luther, the uh, great uh, preacher in Europe who was the one responsible for breaking away from the Catholic Church and forming what is called the Protestant part of the Christian faith. He was protesting against the sale of indulgences, meaning that in the church it had become so corrupt that if you had money and you wanted to do that which is against the teachings of Christ, if you paid the money, you could indulge in whatever behavior you wished to indulge in. And Martin Luther uh, resented that and revolted against that. And in some of his own interpretations, he referred to the Pope as that dragon that gave power to the beast. And it also talks about a woman who sits astride the beast. And you will find that the beast has always used his women to trick and trap others for the beast. And that was done in the time of Samson. Delilah used her trickery and her beauty to deceive Samson to learn the secret of his strength and then turned his uh, knowledge of where his strength lied into the hands of his enemy. That is a sign of you, black man and woman. The moment you get these teachings, your hair, which is a sign of the health of your body, begins to grow from a bald head into hair. And his hair became, Samson's hair became so long, it was the sign of his strength. And now that the enemy sees knowledge coming to you, wisdom coming to you, and the time of your rise, your hair is growing. And so he uses the beauty and fascination of the unlike of his women to trap you for him. Oh, I wish I had time to go into that today, but that's not on the schedule for this day. But in future broadcasts, by the grace of Allah, we will get into it. But suffice it to say that this world in which we live is called a vacuum in the history of the black nation. A vacuum, meaning in a vacuum, there is no air, there is no oxygen. So life cannot exist in a vacuum. The original man's natural life of the nature of God cannot reign at a time when wickedness was to rule our planet. And if you look at the Quran, it calls the life of this world a transitory life. What does that mean? That though we are in this world, we are in transit from an infinity of time before the made man came into existence to an infinity of time after his power is broken. And this world, 
the Quran says, is a world of sport and play. Look at this world. It doesn't honor teachers as much as it honors sport and play. It doesn't honor scientists and the great explorations and the great experimentation of the growth in knowledge. It honors and pays the most money to sport and play. And so in this world of sport and play, where do we fit? Black man and woman, we dominate. When they led us into baseball, we dominated. When they led us into basketball, we dominated. When they led us into football, we dominated. When they led us into tennis, we dominated. When they led us into golf, we dominated. And in our domination, we are now getting exorbitant salaries. Most of our young men and women in sports that are successful are making money into the millions and millions of dollars. But how do we end up? We don't use the wealth that we get from our sport and play to invest it wisely so that when the day of sport is over, we have something great to fall back on. But we have fallen into the trap. We start off with a black woman and then we grow and we grow. And when we become great athletes, we look around and we now have a Caucasian counterpart and we are in love. Look at our brain brother Tiger. He was the greatest in golf and he married a woman that was a nanny. And now the nanny is rich, rich, rich because he went off of a moral standard with many more Caucasian women and this woman has taken a great deal of his wealth. Well, black brother, black brother, you start off in the chitlin circuit as an entertainer and you are there singing and dancing and performing for your own black people. You're not making the big money, but when they find you, they see you and they make you a crossover artist and they give you money commensurate with the gift of God that you have. Now you're making millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars singing and dancing and displaying your nudist parts, filling the world with debauchery and sex. But you're rich and your richness makes you think that what you're displaying and what you're doing is morally correct. You sing the filthiest songs. You do the lewdest of dances. And when you are paid and you get an award for your song at the Emmys or at the Grammys or at the Oscars, the first thing that comes out of your beautiful black mouth is, I thank God for this gift, this song, this that made me a hit. But you are not honoring God with the way you are using your talent. Cultural people should be the guardian of liberty and freedom for the world. But today, our talent, our culture, our art is being used to literally corrupt the peoples of the world. Sport and play in a vacuum in our history. Well, before this generation passes, all these signs will be fulfilled. In the book of Revelations, the 11th chapter, the 18th verse, it reads, and the nations were angry, and your wrath has come. 
it is the time of the dead that they should be judged or given justice. Look around you. The Western world, the nations are angry. The nations of the East are angry. The nations of Africa are angry. All of the nations now are angry and all of the nations are arming for the great war that we are coming up on very, very soon. But it is not only that the nations are angry, John the Revelator says, and thy wrath is come, for it is the time that the dead must be judged and given justice. I already said that it's not talking about the dead in the cemeteries. It's talking about the black man and woman of America and the darker people of the world who have slept in a shallow grave of death under the power of Caucasian rule. It is now your time to be given justice. So when the God comes, after the 400 years of our sojourn, our affliction, our oppression, what is his state of mind on his coming? Let's look and see. In the 63rd chapter of Isaiah, who is this? that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah. This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. God is coming. His coming is out of the east and he's wearing dyed garments most of the robes in the east are white but he's coming in the dyed garments of the people of the west look at what he says the question is asked why are you red in your apparel and your garments like him that treadeth the wine press. Now God speaks. I have trodden the wine press alone. When Master Farad Muhammad came on the third year of his presence in speaking to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he said, My name is W.F. Muhammad. I came to North America by myself. The scripture says he came under disguise. And the scripture says if we had known what hour the thief would show up, we would not have suffered our house to be robbed. But the scripture says he came without observation and he spoiled the goods of the house. He came to reform the black man. He came to transform the life of the black man from the life that white America has bred into him to his natural life. So in that same writing, he tells the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that his people were brought over to America 379 years before uh, this writing. My people do not know that they are related to God. How is it that they don't know this? They were made blind, deaf, and dumb by the enemy when they were babies. What is your own self? The question is asked. And he said, your own self is a righteous Muslim. You are already a Muslim by nature. But he puts an adjective in front of the word Muslim because we have been made 
other than righteous. So the greatest teaching that Master Farad Muhammad gave to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was just six words. Be yourself. Accept your own and be yourself. So yourself is righteous. But now look at this one who is coming. He says, I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people, there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come. He's coming. He's present. He's angry. And the fury that is in him is causing him now to bring about destruction and bloodshed so that Isaiah the prophet saw his garments stained with the blood of the wicked. Oh, what a terrible prophecy. And we are now in it, America. We're in it, brothers and sisters. Calamities are striking America on all sides, one after another. In the scriptures, talking about Babylon. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad quoted from John the Revelator, Babylon could have been healed, but she was not. Old Babylon, the city of Babylon that is in Iraq, when it had the Jews in Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar and his nephew or grandfather, according to some scholars and historians, the Jews were in captivity and Babylon should have let them go. But Babylon refused to let them go. So the God turned the neighboring nations against Babylon and Babylon was destroyed. Well, America, that Babylon is gone. But in the book of Revelations, it's talking about a mystery Babylon, meaning that that Babylon that is to be destroyed as the ancient Babylon was, is a mystery. It's not known. But today, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been taught by God that all of it is referring to the United States of America and the world that the Caucasian people have brought into existence. He's come. He is furious. He's destroying now the wicked and some of us that don't believe that we are at the end of the time of the wicked to hold us in captivity. We have become so blind and so deaf to the hearing of truth that we are happy, happy, happy to be integrated into a house of filth and evil that God has come to set down. Let's go on for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come. Remember the words of Isaiah the prophet, shall the prey be taken from the mighty and the lawful captive be delivered? It's talking about us. And that's why Paul said to us, be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. But how can our minds be renewed if we won't listen to the truth 
that will raise us from a dead level. In the Holy Quran, as I mentioned last week, God and Satan are having a talk. And Satan is saying to God, respite me till the day when they are raised. They who? Raised how? Satan is telling God, give me a delay, a postponement of my doom until the day when my 400 year captive slave, free slave, is raised with the knowledge that the God would bring. So here, Satan is telling God, no, I am not going to let you raise them because their being raised is the end of me. So I'm going to fight against their being resurrected from their dead level. And that's why today he's giving you so much filth and indecency to practice. I remember years ago, you couldn't see women disrobed as they are today. Even if there were homosexuals in our community, they didn't parade themselves before the world. They would hide it because the average person would not countenance homosexuality or lesbianism. But look at Hollywood, how it promotes it. Look at how cross-dressing is being uh, advised and many great black strong men have been asked to put on women's clothes. For what? They're selling a thought to black people that it's all right to be other than yourself. You remember when I spoke of Medea, I never saw Brother Tyler Perry as a man that was promoting cross-dressing. I saw him promoting Medea, that great woman in the life of black people. Of course, it was done in a comic way, but nevertheless, the scriptures of the Bible teach against women dressing like men, and it teaches against men dressing like women. And even in the Old Testament, the punishment for so doing was death under the law of Moses. Hollywood, you all know the Torah, you know what God has said, but you are promoting evil. You are promoting that which is against the will and the way of God, and you're doing it purposely. Not so much for your people, but you know that we are to receive the kingdom after God takes it from you. And you hate the fact that our rule is going to come whether you like it or not. The kingdom will be taken from you and given to this rejected stone, this black man that God has chosen to be his people. You know this, so you want to feed us all the filth that we can eat, all the debauchery that we can stand, so you are now bringing the privacy of sex into public uh, view in your movies, in your magazines, in your newspapers. It's all about sex, titillating the people of America, particularly our young people, to get involved in the kind of behavior that they can 
uh, see on internet they can see it in the movies and it's very difficult for parents even to close their children off from the filth that is abounding in the society even down to cartoons you are promoting that which is against the will and commandments of God you are promoting lying you're promoting stealing you're promoting cross-dressing you're promoting lesbianism and homosexuality sexuality you are doing this purposely and the scripture says Satan has made evil fair seeming to the people so we are so confused today we think it's all right because the scripture says God is love and I'm in love and love has to be right because love is of God See how you have deceived yourself. And now you will be angry with me and say, oh, Farrakhan, you're homophobic. You hate gay people and lesbians. That's false. I'm in love with my people. I'm in love with you regardless of how you present yourself. I have never disrespected you. I have had teachers of my violin that are gay. I never disrespected them, nor did they disrespect themselves in my presence. I was educated by a gay person in Detroit because I spoke ugly about uh, lesbianism and homosexuality, and he was hurt. And when I came to Detroit, he asked to see me and I remember his listening to my lecture and he came to the private quarters that I had and I let him in and we sat and talked and he wanted to change his way of life and he gave me guidance in, he didn't know he was guiding me, but he was telling me about the language that I used. It was the same with rabbis that I sat down and talked with. They had dinner in my home and they told me that some of my language was hurtful to them. They didn't know it, but later I told this former chief rabbi, dean of the rabbis in Chicago, that what he told me, I thought about it. I'm not interested in making white people enemies of ours. I'm not interested in stirring up hatred in you for me or for us. But I have to give you the message whether you hear or forbear. So I try now to be more careful in the way I speak because it is not my desire to hurt your feelings, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, truth hurts, but it only hurts the guilty. And I remember Brother Malcolm one day when he was lecturing at a college and uh, the people started hissing the Caucasians against him. And he said, oh, that's what your father did in the garden. And he said, whenever a man throws a stone in a pack of dogs, the only one that hollers is the one that gets hit. And today, if I don't preach the truth to try to save your life, I will lose mine. And if I don't warn you of what the consequences are and you continue in what you're doing with no desire even to change because you think you are living right this enemy is a scientist of evil he's studying bacteriology and chemistry in such a way that he can change you chemically to think you are what you are not He's a wise Satan. That's who you're dealing with. You're not dealing with just common wicked man. You're dealing with the Satan, the God of this world. And he's after you, black man and woman, to take you down with him when he goes. Let me go on with that subject because 
the strong black men are being asked by Hollywood to put on dresses. Strong black men are offered lots of money. I won't name the person, but the manager of a certain strong black man came to me and begged me, please talk to the one that I'm managing, for they have offered him $15 million to cross-dress, to dress like a woman in a movie, and I don't want him to do that. Could you talk with him? But the scripture says, money answereth all things, and so $15 million a man will put on a dress in a heartbeat. Well, white people put on dresses too. But they're not after their own. They're after you. You remember Dave Chappelle? How he said that uh, he was in his dressing room and when he took a break and went back in his dressing room, there was a dress on the uh, door and he thought he was in the wrong uh, place. And then a man came in and said, oh, we got a real funny scene. And, and, and it's, a, it's around this dress. Dave, put on the dress. Dave said, I, I, I'm not putting on the dress. That man went out, and then uh, a higher ranking person came and told Dave, oh, Dave, it's just a, a short scene, but it is hilarious, and it will go over big in the audience. And Dave then said, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't want to put on a dress. Then the producer himself came and said, uh, Dave, I mean, it's really a funny scene. Come on, Dave. And he said, I'm sorry. I can't put on that dress. And he said, when they left, they came back within a very short time. They had already written the real scene, but they wanted to get him to put on a dress because what they're selling, black brother, is that they want you to be so wrapped up in what they're wrapped up in that you will stick your fingers in your ear when you hear the warning and the call of God. And when you do that, you will go down to hell with your enemies. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, the enemy is after you. This generation shall not pass before all these things come to pass. As it is written in the scriptures, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But you're acting so weak that when you know he's leading you to something that you should not do, you don't resist because you want the fame, you want the money, you want the job, you want nearness to your enemies. Remember how Satan took Jesus up on a mountain and showed him all of the cities that he could have if only he would bow down to Satan. Mountain here means he takes you up to a high place because that's where you want to be in sport, in play, in music, in science, in medicine. You want to be on the mountaintop. But the man that's taking you there is the God of this world. And as he said to Jesus, if you would bow down and worship me, you can have all of this. But Jesus had the strength to say to Satan, get thee behind me, Satan. 
And that is where Satan belongs. He doesn't belong in front of you, leading you. You need to put him not only behind you, but put him out of the equation altogether. God is present today. And if you really want to go up in strength and power and wealth and righteousness, remember Satan only promises you to deceive you. It is written in the Holy Quran. And when the matter is decided, and this matter is going to be decided and very soon, Satan will say to you, Allah promised you a promise of truth. And I promised you, then failed you. So blame me not. But blame yourselves, for I deny your associating me with Allah before. The matter is being decided as you are listening to this broadcast. He has lied to you. He has falsely deceived you. He's trying to make you believe that he can make a place for you with him. But his place is being taken. He cannot make a place for himself anymore. But God is here to make a place for you. Don't let the devil's false promises deceive you. Tell him, Thank you, but no thank you. You don't have to go along to get along. Just stand up and be your righteous self. You don't have to be disrespectful of them. After all, they are the God of the world that we are living in. They demand that respect. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we respect the laws that govern this nation and we are in obedience to those laws as long as those laws do not conflict with our religion. You can be stand up, you can be strong with without being disrespectful. I'm pleading with you. Please, think about what you're seeing and what you're hearing and know that God does not hate you. He loves you and he's calling you out of a way that hurts your future, which is a great future and your enemies in Hollywood, they know it. So they want you to keep on being the clown, the buffoon, the fool. They want you to keep on feeding the people with filth in your lyrics. Stop it, brothers and sisters. The time is at hand. The time is set. The time is come. May God guide you and bless you and protect you from the evil of Satan's wiles that you may be free to live in peace in a brand new world. Thank you for listening and may Allah grant you the light of understanding as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, please log on again next week and every week this year for the time and what must be done. Tell your friends, tell your family. Log on to NOI.org every Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Time for truth, guidance, and unequaled love from the National Representative of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Pass on the word every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time at NOI.org. The time and what must be done. Remember, to have Minister Farrakhan answer your questions, tweet them to at Louis Farrakhan, hashtag Ask Farrakhan. And to add this message to your library or as a gift for someone you love, go to store.finalcall.com.